Hi, I'm Brian Oliva from Gethsemane Music. Today we're going to dive into the Moog One and check out the basics of the browser screen. The browser screen is the default screen that pops up when the Moog One is turned on. It shows the current preset and all the information associated with it. By hitting the home button repeatedly, you can switch back and forth between the preset detail screen and the preset list of all the presets in the Moog One. The main preset screen shows everything you need to know about the preset. It has the name of the preset. If it's assigned to a performance bank, it'll show you what set, bank, and preset number it is. It shows the default beats per minute assigned to it. It shows the names of all the timbres that are included for synths 1, 2, and 3. Since the bars are red all the way across, it shows that all three timbres are activated and stretch for the entire length of the keyboard. The gray bars in the center show where your octaves are set. If it's centered as it's shown here, your octave setting is in the middle. You can go plus or minus two octaves using the octave control. And when you do so, those bars would shift left or right accordingly to show what part of the keyboard is active. Below that are the four groups that can be changed or adjusted. The type, in this case, is multi-category FX. The mood is chaotic and the group is factory. When you create a preset, you can set those to match whatever it is you created. This allows you to sort by those categories, or the mood, or the group, to limit what shows in the long browser list. Since you can have several thousand presets, these controls are vital to thinning out the pack so that you can find what you're looking for. If you create a preset and leave those blank, there's no way to search for them using that criteria, and they'll get lost in the crowd. To search through the preset list, just go to the long list and turn the encoder knob, and it'll go up or down the list one by one. If you'd like to go faster, press the shift key. Now the encoder will go a page at a time, or basically jumping down six lines for every click of the of the uh, knob. Press the shift key again, you'll go back to going one at a time to zero in on the one you're looking for. Press the encoder knob and it'll load that preset. This preset is a good example to see what a split keyboard would look like on the display. The red bars show which parts of the keyboard are active, and all the way to the right it shows the exact note range. So since 1 and 2, which are the leads, would play only if you're playing notes from A-sharp 4 and higher. The bass part would only play if you were playing a note from A4 down through C0 at the bottom of the keyboard. So in this case, your left hand would be playing the bass, and your right hand would be playing the two lead parts simultaneously. Next we'll look at how to pare down that long list of presets to get it into something manageable. By using the four knobs at the bottom, you can adjust the type. In other words, just pick layers or multis or singles. You can look at the categories, such as arpeggios, atmospheric, bass, brass, chords, and such. Or you can go by the mood, aggressive, atmospheric, blissful, bright, calm, chaotic. Or you can go in by the group, which typically identifies who made it or what category it was put in. So you've got Factory, Geosynths, Gethsemane, and whoever created it, Horizons Collection from Moog, etc. And by using those knobs, either individually or in combination, it'll allow you to only see the presets that fall into those categories. They can use, be used singly or in combination. Another feature on some presets is the note page. The second slide key at the top toggles between Show Info and Show Notes. If the preset has notes, you'll see them at the bottom of the screen, or at least the first couple of lines. If you then push Browse Presets to get to the the summary, 
On the right side, you'll see the full notes that are on that preset. Those notes can tell you whatever the author wanted you to know about it. Sometimes it's uh, how to properly use the modulation effects. Sometimes it's just some hints as to what keys to press or anything unusual about the thing that'll just help you to use it more productively. That concludes this video on the browser. Hopefully you found it interesting and helpful. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Be on the lookout for more tutorials on the Moog One and my other Moog Synths.